Former Chief of Defence Staff Irabor pulls out of military in colourful ceremony as Defence Headquarters gives senior military officers till Monday to resign. A mayor of Kano pays Salah homage to Governor Abba Kabir in Government House. Three dead, one injured as car rams into truck in Ogun State. On the foreign scene, flooding in South Africa kills seven. Rescue crews are searching for another seven missing people. Hello and welcome to the news update on Trust TV. I am Ayuba Ilya. Thanks for joining. And now the details. The immediate past Chief of Defense Staff General Loki Rabo says that providing security for a diverse country like Nigeria is not an easy task, but not impossible to achieve. He said this in his valedictory speech during the pulling out ceremony organized for him at the Mogadishu cantonment in Abuja on Friday. According to Irabo, the debts the country owes to men and women who serve in the armed forces cannot be paid fully. He expressed satisfaction with his service in the military, saying that he is living the armed forces today bigger and stronger than he met it. The nation should be proud of its military, to whom too many security concerns seem to now be consigned. I therefore state with a sense of responsibility that in, as a nation, we should avoid the deliberate or inadvertent inclination to denigrate the contributions of the armed forces to national security, unity and stability. To do so would be to effectively undermine the Nigerian state. As I transition into the next phase of my life, I carry with me a deep sense of pride and gratitude for the opportunity to have served our great nation. Our military stands as a beacon of hope, strength and resilience in an increasingly complex world and I'm honored to have played a part in that noble endeavor. Meanwhile, the Defense Headquarters has directed all senior officers with seniority on commission above Nigerian Defense Academy regular course 39 to proceed on voluntary retirement. This development comes on the heels of the appointment of the new service chiefs by President Bola Tinubu. The notice of resignation was made known in a statement from the Defence Headquarters signed by Monday by Major, signed on Monday by Major General Yahaya. According to military tradition, senior officers are unlikely to take orders from their juniors. Thus, the new appointments necessitate the compulsory retirement of about 100 top officers, including generals, brigadier generals, Air Vice Marshals and Admirals in the Nigerian Army, Navy and Air Force from the force. Now, the affected senior officers who are expected to file in their voluntary retirement are officers above the NDA Regular Course 39. The new Chief of Defence Staff, Major General Christopher Musa, is a member of 38 Regular Courses, while the Chief of Army Staff, Major General Torid Lagbaja, the Chief of Naval Staff, Rear Admiral Emmanuel Ogala and the Chief of Air Staff and Air Vice Marshal Hassan Abubakar are members of the 39th Regular Course. Kano State Governor Abba Kabir says he has no regrets over the ongoing demolition exercise his government is undertaking to reclaim government properties. While receiving the mayor of Kano at the state government house to mark this year's Hawan Nasarawa Durba, the governor further assured the mayor that his administration will continue to work for the interest of Kano people. Trust TV's correspondent Idris Debrin reports. In Hawan Nasarawa Durba, the emir traditionally marched out his troops to the state government house in order to pay Salah homage to the governor. According to Governor Abba Kabir, this year's Hawan Nasarawa is unique for the state government, the Emirates and the entire people of Kano State because it's the first time to be observed by him as governor of the state. It is the first day when the emir visited his brother 
to pay homage as the governor of Kano State. Your Highness, let me seize this opportunity to once more inform you that since we assumed office, we have been working very hard day and night to ensure that we fulfill most of the promises we made to the good people of Kano State. Informing the Emir about his achievement within the last 31 days, Governor Abba Kabir says the demolition of each central ground in Kofarmata is his greatest achievement of all, followed by the payment of 1.6 billion naira neko fees, revival of feeding across boarding schools in Kano, among others. We have never demolished individuals' houses or individuals' properties. What we are doing is to look at public places that are meant for the enjoyment of the good people of the state. Hospitals, graveyards, schools, and so on and so forth. So I just want to say we, that we in government have no regret for our action whatsoever because we know we are doing it for the betterment of the good people of the state. My greatest happiness as far as the demolition is concerned is the retrieval of the idle ground uh, situated at Koparbata that has been there for years that is meant for the Muslim Ummah. While commending the state governor's excellent leadership qualities, the Emir assures that the Emirate will continue to cooperate and support all government policies and programs geared towards the development of Kano people, as he called on government to intensify efforts towards easing the suffering of the poor masses. <laughs> Your Excellency, I wish to inform you that the Kano Emirate will support and cooperate with all your policies and programs for the development of our dear state. I therefore call on you to continue to do your best in easing the suffering of the masses, especially given that the increase in fuel price has posed some hardship to the people. Hundreds of Kano residents turned out to receive the Emir, his royal trends, and other traditional title holders who rode their horses to the state government house. Idris Jobrin, Trust TV News, Kano. Now, the Eid al Kabir celebration in Nigeria's federal capital territory was low key on the second day of the festivities as Nigerians struggle with the rising standard of living. Trust TV's Abdurrahman Umar, who visited some relaxation sports around the city center, says such sports were a shadow of themselves as they were almost deserted due to the reduced purchasing power of the average Nigerian. The report. As dry as this beautiful garden is, it was once a sought-after location for many on every Itzala celebration, as families strong to eat to celebrate the Eid al-Kabir. However, on this day, which is the second day of Salah, all seems not too well for the celebrants here, as a result of country's harsh economic realities. Victor Akukogo, who even though is not a Muslim, says he feels for the Muslim Ummah due to the high cost of living, which disrupted their plans of celebrating it in a grand style, as they have always done in the past. Yes, I was talking to my brother as I was coming. I see the old place is somehow quiet. I said, normally, we have more people around to celebrate but we can see maybe due to transport and every other thing everywhere so has can't see. Abbe Idris says although he was able to take his family out for the East celebration he found it surprising that he is the only one amongst the very few that were able to do the same. Going to the Eid ground we have a lot of turnouts of the Muslim faithful but the celebration is so very low. I was here this morning about 30 minutes with my family to come and uh, have uh, fun here. But to my surprise, the place is empty. It's very unusual, not as we used to have. You know, when you are coming down from the transcorp, usually around this time, you now see, you cannot even pass, you see your safety, all sorts of security. In fact, the place will be blocked. But now it is free. 
I was able to drive straight inside and park my vehicle. And uh, in fact, there's no people around. Hassan Awal has been in the business of ram selling for over 13 years here in Abuja. He says in all the years he has been in the business, this year has been the most difficult one for him. As according to him, he was able to send out all his rams and even go back to his family to celebrate Eid al-Kabir with them in all the previous years. Just like last Eid al-Kabir celebration, by now we were able to sell all our rams and went back to our family and enjoy as well as celebrate with them. But in this Eid al-Kabir celebration, even a chicken I could not slaughter. It's very unfortunate. For Shehu address, Thursday, June 29, is his fifth day in Abuja, where he has been struggling to find something to take to the family. He says his efforts were futile. I spent five days in this town, hustling for anything to take back to the family. But there is nothing, and we all have our families to take care of. Indeed, the almost lonely and less busy streets of Abuja have said it all that this year's Eid al-Kabir celebration was practically a low-key affair, with very little to show for, due to the reduced purchasing power of residents. Abdrahman Umar, Cross TV News, Abuja. Now, in view of the current economic realities, some Nigerians believe that the 2023 Eid our other celebrations was negatively impacted. This, they say, may not be unconnected to the hike in prices of sacrificial rums and other commodities in the market. Ibrahim Ismail examines the impact of the economy on the celebration in Gombe. Eid al Adha commemorates the Quranic tale of Prophet Abraham's willingness to sacrifice his son Ismail as an act of obedience to Allah. Muslims who have the means are encouraged to sacrifice a ram as an act of worship to Allah. In this year's Eid al-Adha, Nigerians have been struggling to raise money to buy ram to sacrifice during the Salah due to soaring prices, while some Muslims who used to slaughter more than one ram have cut the numbers. Others could not afford to slaughter even a single ram. <laughs> The previous seller was better than this one because of the harsh economy. I couldn't afford to slaughter Iran, but I did last year. We thank Allah. One who doesn't have what to eat would rather buy food or fertilizer for his farm. That's why a lot of people couldn't afford to slaughter ram this year. However, despite the harsh economic conditions, many Muslims have been able to perform the sacrifice. I witnessed some improvement this year. I slaughter a cow. People are different. While some struggle to survive, others have the needs. I was opportune to slaughter bigger animals this year, despite people's complaints. While delivering his Eid message, Gombe State Governor asked Nigerians to support the government for economic prosperity. And I wish and pray that each and every one of us will continue, continuously pray for our leaders. The president has shown capacity has shown the will and the zeal to deliver on the challenges that are facing this country. So also the governors. Everybody must be on board for us to deliver. So I pray that we shall continuously work hard and pray that God will give us the, the resources, the energy and the zeal and the passion and the determination to deliver on the challenges so that the, all the entire people of Nigeria 200 million plus and the wider West Africa and the whole Arabs will have peace, will have harmony, will have tranquility so that we enjoy the lives that God has given us. Gombe State Government has extended the Eid holiday to Friday to allow civil servants enjoy three days of Salah break. Ibrahim Ismail, Trust TV News, Gombe. Three people have been confirmed dead while one other was injured in an accident on Friday along the Lagos-Ibadan Expressway. 
The accident involved a Toyota Sienna vehicle and a DAF truck. Spokesperson of the Federal Road Safety Corps FRSC in Ogun State, Florence Ogbe, while confirming the accident to journalists on, uh, in Abiokuta, said that the accident occurred around the total petrol station located on the highway. Ogbe disclosed that seven persons comprising four male adults, two female adults and one child were involved in the accident, which she blamed on overspeeding and on the part of the Sienna driver. She explained that the Sienna driver rammed into the daft truck coming up uh, in the trailer park. You're watching the news update coming up shortly. We'll take a look at how Bauchi youths are leveraging on celebration for self-sufficiency. Details and more after the break. Welcome back. You're watching the news update on Trust TV. Let's take a look at the top stories. Former Chief of Defense Staff Irabo pulls out of military in colorful ceremony as Defense Headquarters gives senior military officers till Monday to resign. A mayor of Kano pays Salah homage to Governor Abba Kabir in Government House. Still on the Salah festivities, the Salah celebration has come and gone, but the memory of Tarini in Sokoto still lingers. In this report, Abubakar traces the origin of the age-long tradition of sharing and preserving Salah meat in Sokoto. In Saladi, one of the rituals of the day is the slaughtering of rams to commemorate the sacrifice made by Prophet Abraham. Here are residents of Sokoto State Metropolis processing their sacrificial lambs for consumption and distribution to the needy, neighbors, and distant relatives. This age-long tradition of roasting is known in local parlance as tarini, meaning barbecue. In each community, there is a designated spot for such tradition, and every resident is expected to bring his slaughtered lamb for tarini. This process is considered cumbersome, especially by resident communities, because it involves slaughtering the lambs or cows or any animal permitted by Islam, butchering them, fixing them to stakes, and setting up bonfire to roast them. They can remain there overnight, and when they are fully roasted, each family will remove their own and take them home. They would cut them into pieces for easy frying and eventual distribution. 
This tradition has remained even in the face of modernization. Some of the residents say Tarini has been on for centuries. This tradition is peculiar only to the people of Sokoto State. It has been on for centuries. During every Eid al-Kabir, we slaughtered our sacrificial animals as enshrined in the Holy Quran, and this is how we process the meat. Each family brings their slaughtered rams here. We set a bonfire and roast them, and every family has their name written on their rams for easy identification. I don't know how the tradition started. I am now over 70 years, but I only grow up to see my parents doing it. It's a good tradition with a lot of advantages. The tradition is also seen as a unifying factor for members of the community. Tarini brings members of the family together. It transcends the bonds of our relationship. It makes us see ourselves as one big family. It is also another way of reserving the meat because, according to Madan Garba Gada, any meat that undergo this process can last for over one year. As I'm talking to you, there are some people who still have last year's sellers meat. They are also confident that the tradition will not go into extinction. Abu Bakr Awal Imam reporting for Trust TV. As the Salah celebrations continued, some youths in Bochi State have resolved to make life more meaningful for themselves as they concentrate on sales and sharpening of knives as a business, especially during the annual Salah festival. Now, the youth told Trust TV that the trait they are sure with the trait that they are sure of being self-reliant. Adam Imam report. With the celebration in its second day, some youths within the state capital took advantage of the period to make ends need by selling knives and sharpening orders to customers who to the slaughtering of animals less strenuous. They said the business is flourishing despite the economic downturn as more people patronize them during Salah. This has been my business for over 15 years. In spite of the economic challenges, I was able to make it, but now things have changed to the extent that price of the machine we use to sharpen knives have tremendously increased. That notwithstanding, we are trying to adapt the situation in order to stay in business. This business is helping us a lot because since we usually visit the weekly markets for patronage and during Salah period we come to town, we are enjoying but if changes come, we will embrace them fully. For me, I will use the little I have to go back to school soon because I have a dream for my future by God's grace. <laughs> Honestly, the hike in the price of oil touched virtually everything. I went all the way to Kasuna State to buy this iron. Transportation is now 8,500 naira as against 3,500 naira the previous years, so it is not easy. Nowadays, they measure the raw materials to know the weight using kilograms. Right now, we have our own share of the hardship. For those who have the means of partaking in the sacrifice, the rise in price of animals and knives, notwithstanding, the celebration must continue. I come to sharpen my knives because if you want to slaughter broken buffets, don't suffer the, 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 the your cow or your, uh, your own the animals. Don't, if you want to slaughter them, don't suffer them. Don't suffer them. That is why you have to sharpen your knife. If you come to slaughter, you do it once and for all. This one is good for slaughtering animals, especially cows. We resorted to buying and sharpening them according to the Islamic injunction that says, don't suffer yourself and the animals while making a sacrifice. The sharing of salah meat with family members and the less privileged, especially those who cannot afford to buy the animals, enable many to feel a sense of belonging as this is part of the worship 
that earns faithful more reward from God. Adam Imam, Trust TV News, Bauchi. Now, the management of the Lekki Deep Sea Port has announced that uh, Rimbaud has become the first uh, transshipment vessel to berth at the port. Making this known in a series of tweets on Friday, the port management said that it, the ship is operated by CMA CGM. It stated that the vessel sailed all the way from the Far East. According to the tweet, the Nigerian Port Authority provided marine services, adding that it was berthed at appropriately 1 p.m. on Thursday afternoon. The Nigerian Customs Agency boarded the vessel and all paperwork was certified to be in order. Now, on the foreign scene, seven people have died and another seven are missing after days of heavy rainfall triggered floods in and around the South African city of Durban. Local government authorities said on Friday that six people died in Durban and one in Port Shemstone, a beachside town about 120 kilometers to the south. According to the KwaZulu-NATO provincial government, Rescue teams are still searching for seven more people. Authorities said that they, recovered, that they recovered the bodies of a woman in her 20s and a teenage girl in a canal in Durban to take the death toll to seven. Around 70 houses have been destroyed and more than 100 damaged in the wild weather, while more than 150 people have been left homeless. And in sports news, Katsina United have signed the trial of Victor Mbauma, Bolaji Saking and Aziz Olami Lekon. Mbauma joined the promotion chasing Katsina United after an unsuccessful spell with Algerian side Molodia al al Now, Saking linked up with the Chanji boys after a brief spell with Rivers United. The forward only returned to the Nigerian Premier League last season following a stint in Guinea with Horoya FC while Olamileko was in the books of Aqua, Aqua United last season. Now, Katsina United are looking to secure promotion to the Nigeria Premier League. Usman Abdullah's side will lock horns with Kano Pillars as DMD FC and EFCC FC in the Nigerian National League. Super 8 playoffs. And that's it for the news update. You can watch more via all our social media platforms and also on our YouTube live stream. I am Ayuba Ilya. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.